Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video we'll be doing the full review of this iPhone 13 uh, Pro. And guys, if you recall, I've been actually, I posted the unboxing video almost about 45 days ago. And before reviewing this iPhone 13 Pro, I wanted to actually really use it. So I've used it now for the past over 45 days. So I'll let you know as an end user what do i feel about it what are the good things about this one and what are the things that i did not like and i've made a lot of pointers because it's been 45 days so i'll go over it uh, and i'll uh, guys i won't divide it into pros and cons but don't worry i will mention the uh, shortcomings also in reality what i felt but it won't be that pros and cons section because i feel people just goes to the cons section forgetting about the pros the pros and the cons actually uh, make the whole experience so i'm going to divide it in areas okay and uh, as you've seen from the title it's a very weird kind of a title and that's what i felt with this uh, smartphone actually in terms of practicality it's a brilliant smartphone but like any other smartphones there are some shortcomings uh, so let's talk about that one Okay, first let's talk about the screen and I'm going to look at the laptop guys because it's here over here. I don't want to miss the points. And first thing is regarding the screen and the display. And here finally, finally, Apple has moved from that 60 Hertz uh, OLED display to this 120 Hertz. One and guys, this is actually a dynamic one. Uh, so it's not constantly at 120 Hertz. It moves between 10 to 120 Hertz based on what's happening. Right now, nothing is happening. So it might be on 10 Hertz. And uh, finally, I would say it's high time Apple moved it because on Android phones, we have seen that 120 Hertz on a lot of smart. But sadly, it's only on the Pro version. This is not on the regular version. Uh, but now coming to the reality, I've been uh, hearing from people like, okay, the 120 Hertz uh, implementation on iPhone is far better than Android. All rubbish, guys. It's a good 120 Hertz screen. And I would say on an iPhone, what I have noticed is that the jump from 60 to 120 hertz is not as drastic as I've seen on other Android smartphones. And the simple reason is that the animations on the iPhones are not as fast that you'll find on what you say most of the Android uh, phones. That's why moving uh, between the uh, 60 to 120 hertz is not a huge difference on Android. It's a huge difference. But I welcome the move. Once you're used to this 120 hertz, going back is difficult. And coming to another thing is that the screen quality is really, really good and it's actually a really bright screen. So even in outdoor situations, if you use it in direct sunlight, it's easily visible. So excellent quality screen and I'm glad they moved to that 120 hertz. Okay, let's move to the next uh, section and that is regarding the build quality. Uh, and here I would say it's excellent, guys. Uh, I'm using it with a case. Uh, I just bought this case from Amazon. Um, still it's not yellow it's a transparent case using in 45 days build quality is really really good on this one uh, so no issues of that i would say uh, but again i would say this is a definitely a heavy phone for the screen size i would say and it takes a little bit of time getting used to it and you might say why am i using a case because if you notice i generally never use cases on a smartphone i don't like it uh, but guys uh, the thing is that in India, this is very, very expensive. And I've heard that even if you crack the back glass, uh, the repairs on the iPhones are super, super expensive here in India. So I've been using this uh, transparent case uh, uh, and it's been working fine. I forgot the name of this one. I had purchased this from Amazon. So I'll leave the link of this case in the description in case you want to check it out. In fact, uh, accidentally once the phone fell on the back and thankfully because of the case, as you can see, nothing has happened. Uh, so build quality is excellent, but uh, the phone definitely is on the heavier side, I would say, and it'll take a little bit of time to get you. So that's the reality of that one. And that was one of the main reasons I didn't go for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, because that's actually just super, super heavy. If you are planning to go for that one, go to a store, and use that for 10 minutes and see if it's comfortable or not because uh, it's definitely very very heavy anyways uh, let's move to the next thing that i liked and uh, this is regarding the call quality and the network i tested this one with my airtel sim in fact uh, still my airtel sim is in this one and everything works uh, wi-fi calling etc all those things work on this one 
And of course, yes, uh, all iPhones uh, 13 series are 5G in India, so you don't have to worry. And they'll support multiple bands of 5G, unlike some vendors with just a, a couple of bands. So uh, whenever 5G comes next year in India, you don't have to worry. Uh, coming to the earpiece on this one, the earpiece quality is excellent on this one. I had no issues of uh, in regarding the call quality. Even the microphone quality is very, very good. No issues of proximity sensor or, or anything, even on super long calls. So that way, if you're sort of a business user, you will like it you don't have to worry about it call quality is very good network reception was also very good on this uh, smartphone now coming to the battery life here i would say uh, this iphone 13 series definitely and this 13 pro surprised me because generally on the iphones except for the max edition the big size one battery life was always sort of an issue but here on this one i would say based on the last 45 days of usage battery life has been stellar on this one uh, even with the typical days of usage i was always having about 40 to 45 percent battery life left at the end of the day at about 11 o'clock at night i'd start my day at about 6 30 in the morning so battery life has been very good on this smartphone uh, that is something that is uh, has surprised me i thought uh, yes everybody says it's good but genuinely guys it's been very very good on uh, the smartphone again i charged it last 10 days if you notice and a couple of days i had some very heavy usage with the smartphone if you guys know i've started riding the bike so i put this on my bike and was using it as a gps uh, for continuously for two hours in hot sun so it was on auto brightness the screen at max brightness that kind of usage i uh, did a lot of uh, camera samples also that particular day i took uh, and even at the end of the day that typical pretty heavy usage it was down to just 10 percent at 11 o'clock 11 30 at night so in terms of battery life i would say uh, you don't have to worry about this one and also like most of the uh, what do you say iphones the idle drain is also very very low on this one so at night if you leave it uh, there's almost hardly any battery drain on iphones that's the case even with this one so idle drain is really good coming to the performance guys you don't have to worry it has the a15 bionic chip so in terms of performance no issues and also in terms of ui guys no issues it's ios no lag whatsoever and memory management if you also notice it's very very good i don't simply have to uh, look at it uh, or worry about uh, all those uh, things so that way again no issues uh, in terms of day-to-day -day usage or memory management or something like that so that just works in the background and it just works i would say so that way i did not have a problem uh, the only thing i would say this is nitpicking uh, for battery life this is still stuck to that lightning port so i have to consciously carry that extra cable in the back because every other gadget that i have is not type c compatible so that is a sore point uh, coming to the stereo speakers also the stereo speakers are very very good on this one no issues in fact guys also watch if you're seriously considering this iphone 13 pro or the iphone 13 also watch the other video that i posted that is the faq video on this one that also answers a lot of common questions that you guys were having anyways let's move to the uh, next thing again i this is again a ios uh, thing not particularly to the iphone 13 pro but i feel uh, on ios generally uh, i feel uh, that uh, the app permissions and data uh, what do you say permissions and the uh, kind of data that is shared with third party is better compared to android smartphone so in that respect i would say uh, ios is slightly better i would say and i appreciate that because in this age uh, the data that's being shared everywhere etc uh, it's not like the iphones does not have any ads i have noticed one or two ads here uh, for example uh, here as you can see in app purchase in this app store you get here an ad but apart from that i haven't seen any ads or anything in the notifications or anywhere else so that way i would say it is still clean i would say unlike many of the android phones uh, which are having a lot of pre-baked uh, bloatware. Yes, there are some Apple apps on this one also preloaded, uh, but again, most of them are useful. For example, iMovie and other stuff like uh, GarageBand and all those things like that. Uh, now coming to the thing that are uh, really impressed me on this iPhone 13 series is uh, this rear-facing uh, camera. I have to say the rear-facing camera performance is 
brilliant uh, i'll talk about uh, i'll show you samples uh, static samples taken uh, with this one in varying light conditions those were very excellent but first let me also talk about the video the video always iphones have taken very good video the video quality has been very good and that's the case even with this one i would say uh, and in fact the video quality was so good that in some of my what do you say videos I actually have shot parts of the videos or slow motion etc with this one and I've used it in the last 40 days and none of you actually noticed it. In fact, uh, for my bike uh, initial impressions video that was completely actually shot on this one. I'll leave the link of that one. So that way the iPhone still in terms of video, if you sh shoot a lot of videos, I would still say the iPhone, the quality of the videos that come out with the iPhone are really, really good. Just use an external microphone, I would say. But apart from that, the video quality is really good on this one. And in fact, um, as for some of the B-rolls, etc., I'm just using the footage uh, from this one. It's that good. Now, coming to the camera, the camera, rear-facing camera is stellar on this one. Amongst the best, it just works, as you can see with these sample shots. No matter what the lighting conditions are, bright outdoor conditions, yes, every smartphone takes good shots. That's the same case with this one. The dynamic range is good. But the speciality is in very low lighting, dull lighting conditions. The pictures that this one took actually surprised me. The pictures look way brighter than what we are seeing. These uh, uh, areas are very, very dull in lighting. Even if there's a little bit of light, it just me enhances it like crazy so in terms of camera performance i would say uh this uh, the rear facing camera is sort of like a bulletproof camera for example the professional cameras that i use for example i'm shooting this with the canon eos r and why i like it yes it's an ex pretty expensive camera with the uh, special lens but it's like a bulletproof camera and that's the same experience i had with the rear facing camera of this one nine out of ten shots just look fabulous on this one so if you shoot a lot of pictures you'll be very happy uh, with the camera performance of this one now coming to the front facing camera i've said that in my unboxing video also for indian skin tones i don't like the front facing camera that's still the same case with this one so front facing camera i frankly do not like it that much uh, moving to the next thing is uh, this is a con and this is specifically for the pro version of the iphone and that's the pricing the pricing in india i feel is ridiculous the base variant of this iphone 13 pro in india starts at 1 lakh 20 thousand and the one that i have this is the 256 gigabyte variant uh, this is almost 1 lakh 30 thousand so certainly very very expensive i would say if you compare it with uh, international pricing in international pricing it's around 1000 US dollars to 1100 US dollars or something like that but in India it's super super expensive so you're paying a huge premium I would say for the pro series that way I would say the regular iPhone 13 series uh, do make a lot more sense I would say. yes still pricey but not as ridiculously priced as the iPhone 13 pro so the pricing is uh, crazy on this one uh, now coming to one more thing uh, uh, that I have noticed and this is the face ID and as you can see See, this works very well like this but again guys uh, this is coming from practical uh, experience that i've used this phone but if you're wearing a mask uh, most of the time it simply does not work and if you notice i've started again wearing the, uh, this apple watch but if you are having an apple watch then even if you wear mask or even a helmet uh, it just unlocks so I, I would say in this age the situation that we are in we have to wear mask Apple could have provided the fingerprint uh, scanner also in the power on off button. Yes, for secure transactions like doing payments or app purchases or something, force your face ID for that. But for just unlocking, they could have easily given this because if you don't have an Apple watch and if you're wearing a mask and or you drive a bike or something, this can be pretty inconvenient. And this is the reality that we are living in. So that is something that I miss. But after wearing the Apple Watch, uh, it just works seamlessly, I would say. It didn't work initially when I got it. There was one OT update that fixed it. Now it works perfectly with the Apple Watch. Even if you wear a mask or a helmet, it just unlocks if you're wearing an Apple Watch. So yeah, but again, you have to have an Apple Watch. That's a different, uh, what do you say, expense. Now, uh, let me talk about uh, some of the uh, nitpicks. Uh, coming from a what do you say android users point of view that i feel on the missing on the some of the features that are missing on the iphone 13 pro 
And the first thing is, there is no always on screen. This is an OLED uh, screen, but we don't have that always on. And we have seen this always on notifications and stuff for, on Android phones from such a huge time. And Apple could have easily given it because the battery life is stellar on this one. So that is something that I miss. Hopefully they enable it with iOS 16 update, keeping my fingers crossed because genuinely that's a, actually a useful feature, I would say. Uh, next thing is, uh, and this is again, if you're an Android uh, phone user and if you rely on Truecaller, I have the paid version of the Truecaller, then also it simply does not work that well on iOS. The functionality is like just like 40%, I would say. So if you rely heavily on Truecaller, don't expect it to work seamlessly on the iPhone. And uh, next thing is, that that's why I said in the title, boring. Uh, after about 20 days, I felt this is the same old iPhone, the rows and rows of icons. Yes, you have some small widgets now over here. You can add it. But overall, it's mostly the same UI experience. So if you never liked the iPhone UI experience, the iPhone 13 Pro will not change that. Though it has the stellar hardware, but this is a pretty old experience that you have. And uh, so you might get bored of uh, that. And uh, again, as I've already told you, the Lightning port, they should have gone with the USB Type-C port on uh, this one. Uh, and again, say whatever you want. I still don't like that notch on this one. This notch is a huge notch on this one and I simply do not like it. And uh, so these are some of the nitpickings. And now guys, for the summary, I have actually written it down. So I'll just read it so that I do not miss and uh, give a lot of thought for this summary. So here is the summary. In terms of hardware, the iPhone 13 Pro is like a super polished product which just works and does not come in your way. And if you pair it with an Apple Watch, you get the best smartphone and smartphone combination, which is just excellent. The iPhone 13 Pro in terms of functionality wise, it's great and a super polished product. And now even the battery life has become uh, very good. So that is no longer an issue. And I would say this is one of those rare smartphones that I've tested where I could not find any practical faults that bugged me uh, too much while using the same. But the face ID in the mass world is still a bummer in my frank opinion. And at time, um, at times and I feel uh, the Apple should have moved to the type C port for charging But if you were expecting a radical different experience uh, and you never liked iOS UI experience It's basically the same. That's why I say it's boring But still I have to say this is one of the most polished and the perfect smartphone experience I had so guys, that was my review of the iPhone 13 Pro. But in India, the iPhone 13 Pro pricing, as I've told, is sort of ridiculous. So I would say if you're looking for an iPhone, go with iPhone 13 and also buy an Apple Watch. The combination of two will give you a far better experience in my frank opinion. But anyways, guys, that was my review of the iPhone 13 Pro. What do you guys think about the same? Do let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.